What do you think? Um, you made a mention that this might be an indicator to things that have happened with black culture. What, yeah. do, you, what do you mean by that, I guess? So there has been a, just a very obvious corrosion in black culture. Like the music that I grew up in, I was listening to The Temptations, Lauryn Hill. Like it was all about like family, love. It was real talent. And then something just really shifted and it all became about derogatory, debased, gangster rap. And it's the change that I've noted in a lot of my commentary. And, you know, I think other people have, like I asked the question, there's, there's a really, in my view, disgusting artist, just in terms of the stuff that she publishes and the photos that she publishes, named Sexy Red, who they're now making a thing, right? Who makes the decision to sign a Sexy Red? You're telling me you have all the money and all the talent at your fingertips, and you sign a woman who, at her base, baby shower, uh, nine months pregnant, however pregnant she was, was twerking and had her butt cheeks in, like somebody's face was inside of her butt cheeks. That to me is very intentional because you're, you're not signing her based on talent. You're not just signing her based on following. You're signing her because it's filth and you're perpetuating this filth into my community. So I, yeah, I've just, it's just something that I've noticed, something that I talk about often that are, we're intentionally being sold crack, it feels like. You know? What's going on, everyone? It's Austin Kinn here today, and I want to react to uh, Candace Owens confronting Destiny IRL. He's a famous leftist streamer, and I believe it was a good interview. I, I believe it was a good um, discussion, right? And my kind of like overall reaction to it, I watched most of it. Um, you know, the Christian stuff, you know, the I pray for you. I don't understand why liberals get offended by that. And this is the funny part about it. I, I just think that the left don't really understand how anti-Christian they are, right? And I'm saying this as an agnostic person. So all the leftists is going to come in my comment section because I have destiny in the title saying, Kenny, you're just LARPing, you're a conservative, da, da, da. No, it, it's not. Look, end of the day, human beings cannot infer or read people's intentions. And if a liberal is going to sit here in my comment section and try to uh, read into the intentions, uh oh, when conservative, no, when Christians say, I'll pray for you, it's a condescending way of them judging you. That's you imagining what they are saying by that phrasing, right? Is you trying to judge intentions. The last time I checked, humans suck at judging people's intentions. You can only judge people's actions, right? And these are some of the weird things that came up in the discussion, like trade jobs, um, does college actually make people smarter? And this is just some of my points and some of the things I disagree with on Destiny on a lot of these things. I believe that the trade jobs was a better solution for most of America. I think the quality of education in college has gone down significantly, right? People can't really read at a good uh, amount of weight. You got a lot of people who are college graduates that don't actually have any practical skills that that's needed to actually sustain themselves in an economy. That's why you have a lot of these people, same people, crying about they need student loan forgiveness make it make sense right and then and, and college in of itself is a faulty system that takes credit for the success of already smart people because in a day college already filtered for people who are like if i have if i ask you a question are successful people successful because of college or college was merely a stamp of approval they needed to get to the jobs and positions that they needed to my argument is college acts as a gatekeeper to success. It's not, uh, it doesn't train someone. You're not going to come in with bad grades, go to college, and you become a successful person. No, nah, you already have to have the attributes and traits to become successful. To become, like, at the end of the day, this point that Destiny tried to correlate with, oh, college people are just making more income, and it's because of college. I think it's a very faulty argument, in my view anyway, but you guys can disagree with me in the comment section. Well... Let's get into the reaction video. That was some of the points that I kind of want to like highlight before I go into this confrontation because I'm not gonna walk, I'm not gonna watch the entire thing, but I just want to like front load it with all this stuff before I go into the actual reaction. So we we're talking about black culture and how uh, Candace believed that it's manufactured, and I believe it is manufactured. I think this is a way of them normalizing some of this behavior and eventually it's affecting our culture in a negative light and when liberals get mad and say oh why conservatives care so much about what people what other people are doing while if sexuality is open and out in the open it's not hurting anybody conservatives ask the question what, what is harmful because if you're creating a culture that i see as degenerate and that's setting up a lot of people to make bad decisions then that that you're enabling people and enabling predators 
to sexualize children and this is goes into the transition transgender issues there's so many ways i can go into it but i don't want to keep rambling right now because i feel like i've been talking for a while now so let's get into the video i'm trying to think of which direction i want to go um any direction you want i'm an open book yeah you're fine there are there are okay so there are like two kind of different ways of viewing this um and i feel like you fall more to one side then i'll get my side then we kind of see if we can iron out or, or figure where we are at i guess in the middle here um i feel like when you look at the evolution of when we say like degenerate black culture or degenerate black music i think we're generally talking about like the beginning of hip-hop and rap and then kind of the evolution of that going forward c coming away from like the r&b singers and everybody like in the 50s 60s 70s or whatever right yeah um but hip-hop isn't always filth but yeah I yeah, get what, I get yeah, your yeah point. That, but that seems yeah, like the general yeah. yeah um it feels like when I, when I look at music or if I look at music that um, people create, oftentimes the music is a reflection of their circumstances. And you can see, uh, especially as America and, and the black communities became more conscientious maybe of the ghettos that they'd been kind of pushed into or the policing situations that they'd had to be a part of or drugs destroying their community et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then those people turning to crime that you also see the music and the art kind of reflect those conditions. And Before he continues, the music and art reflecting like you know a lot of the arguments that i think the left will say is that oh this is just this expression people are talking about their lives how they grew up in poverty what they had to do to make it out and there's countless rappers and artists that talk about how they essentially lied about that how they were just playing a persona rick ross is the perfect example of this his, his real name isn't rick ross but it was a character that he portrayed and in a way, a lot of these rappers and artists are actors, in my view, right? Right. Just like how Will Smith will act in a role. These artists are acting in a certain persona because it sells music. Right. And I think what I already kind of see where Destiny's going with this. I think he's going to try to make the point that if if this wasn't relatable, if people wasn't identifying with this stuff, would it actually be successful? Right. And this is some of the parts that I think. There's a there's a one way of like saying, hey, like if you had a following, like let's say I have a following and then you saw it and say, oh, this guy already had a following on his own. And there's a difference between, oh, I'm picking this artist out of a crowd of artists that I can pick from. I'm picking Sexy Red to be the next female artist of the decade, pushing her in front of tabloids. Right. Because she don't rep like Sexy Red don't represent the majority of black people. I'm just being honest right now. Right. Tattooed up like that. Like, come on. You're portraying something at that at this point, right? For clicks, views, who knows what it is. But I don't think it's organic. I think someone on high said, oh my God, she represents black culture and let's put this in front. And it's not like when they put artists in front of the, in the limelight and they make famous through algorithms and all that stuff, it's not the fact that, you know, she's popular. It's the fact that they're using her to condition the future generations of a culture. And this is goes to what Candace points and what a lot of conservatives are talking about is when you popularize immodest behavior, you're telling you're signaling to the younger generation, the future generations that this is what society put uh, praises. This is what society puts on a pedestal like it, 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 it bleeds into them trying to push something onto the youth. Right. And TikTok is a perfect example of this, where if you said any kind of common sense stuff like my channel, for instance, if I put if I try to just create a TikTok and I'm speaking common sense, it's overwhelmingly dominated by people who are left leaning, who essentially are spewing things into our culture that is not functionally beneficial to us as a nation. How is it beneficial for a nation to have low birth rates? Make it make sense. All the ideas that the left defends and protects from a functional point of view is actually destructive for the long-term success of a nation. And I think this is some of the talking points that a lot of conservatives, especially black conservatives speak out against in black culture, that black culture, you're, you're there's agents in the black culture that's pushing things that's not productive for the black community. And then I just scaled it up to America. America is not going to be good having five-year-old girls singing about the color of their booty hole and rocking out to lyrics. This is disturbing stuff that we're witnessing here. How literally music and what you put out in our culture conditions the young youth of the future. Show me the incentive and I'll show you the outcome. If you popularize this stuff, incentive, outcome will be more five-year-old girls who will come out looking like sexy red. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's what the conservatives are asking for. And in this, in this, in this clip, I, I know I went on a long tangent here, but I hope you guys are enjoying this. This is why Candace called uh, Destiny a contrarian here. 
because he's not really advocating for anything. It seems like he's just trying to debate, just debate, right? Oh, we don't want to follow two extremes. But to me, I felt like Candace just wanted to have a discussion and Destiny wanted to have a debate. I think that's the best way I can simplify this, but I digress. And then those pieces of art that get, that get created, especially the music, end up being like worldwide popular. Like the most popular genre of music in the, in the world is like hip hop and rap. So when I, when I look at people pushing certain stuff today, I'm like, okay, well, um, we got two really big, in my opinion, uh, I went to school for music, I don't know if you talk about the saxophone or whatever. So we had two really big contributions to the world of music from America. One was jazz um, mm -hmm. that came basically from the black community. And then the second was like rap and hip hop. Um, these forms of music become popular. People see that it's popular. They want to get involved. Obviously, the money men, the people on top, they want to kind of continue to push this because it's popular and everybody around the world consumes it. Mm -hmm. I feel like there are a lot of market forces at work that kind of perpetuate this and keep this happening. And that feels pretty satisfying to me to explain what's going on. So when we ask, like, why is it a woman uh, twerking with somebody's face in her butt cheeks? Because, well, for whatever reason, that's like what the worldwide culture seems to want to see right no. now. And then on the other side, um, it feels like from people, I don't want to just say conservatives, but I'd say broadly speaking, um, I guess I'll say on your side in general, it feels like there's this idea that there's this much more intentional or like malevolent force yes. working behind the scenes. Yes, there is. And and so I'm, I'm, I'm going to push back on what you're suggesting here. You're suggesting that this is uh, this reflects the community and this, they're, they're sharing their stories in a way that makes sense. That's completely not true. Okay, WAP does not reflect the circumstances that black people are living in, you know, singing about your vagina and how hard it's getting pounded is not the circumstance of living in the hood. I come from nothing. It's not that, that did not make me feel closer to the circumstances that I grew up in. And unfortunately, that's actually what people are telling black Americans. Like, actually, it's working the other way. You're yeah, you're going to stereotype black people and say, oh, you guys came from poor. Look at Sexy Red. She, yeah, she could, only way I can make it out is being athletes or rappers or entertainers or actors. And I think, like, if I want to give an example of how I think this is being intentionally pushed on the black community, I believe Beyonce represents more of the common, like, how most black people kind of grow up in. They grew up in church. They used to sing in the choir. Then they got disaffected with the religion and then became and became and went out and do their own thing, being, becoming successful in whatever career path they want to, they decided to follow. Beyonce is more representative of actual black culture, in my view anyway, than a sexy red sexy red is catered to more of a like a certain class of blacks right and this like because end of the day like only 51 i think what was it like majority of black men don't have kids i forgot the stat so a lot of these black women when they say my baby daddy ain't ish they're literally having uh, kids by a dude that have more than one child already they already having kids with dudes that already had kids there's a lot of black men out here that do not have any children whatsoever outside of marriage. But there's this narrative that they perpetuate because what is shown on this big screens. And this is the kind of, I think, commentary that a lot of conservatives are giving is that you're, you're not pushing something that is actually true. I think I feel like they did this before. I forgot what it was called psychological operation. But I feel like they did this before with some magazine where uh women weren't having sex like you know the sex in the city lifestyle and how it was sold to them through a magazine called the cosmopolitan i forgot what it's called but i remember someone brought it up i think it was kevin samuels and he brought it up a point of how no women were doing this but these people were just look, making it up in their head and then next, and then after a generation after having cosmopolitan uh putting out these fake stories Actual women started actually living the lifestyle because they thought people were doing this already. You can see in Hollywood having sex in in, in high school and all this stuff. Like there's there's this idea in young people, and I was young too as high school. You felt like you have to live up to some type of um, narrative that is that was pushed on you. And this is the game I think that Hollywood and many of these media companies are playing and this is one of the reasons why conservatives talk so heavily against social issues because they start realizing hey we tried it your way liberal we try not to comment on social issues we try to let live people live let live but at this point there needs to be some pushback against the direction that you're taking our culture in and i think this is why a lot of conservatives are speaking out against these social issues and having liberals demonize conservatives oh you can't speak your peace oh you're judging people I think it's going out, it's going out the window because conservatives say, look, we stay quiet for a long time and look at the direction you took our cultures. Now you have women thinking they can become men and men thinking they, they can become women. And that's because conservatives stayed quiet. 
Now conservatives are standing up and say, hey, we had enough. Now y'all want to get mad. And this is some of the co the commentary that a lot of liberals have to uh, take home. Is that conservatives ain't going to stay quiet no more. You pushing dinks, sinks, oh, I'm single, income, not no kids, all this lifestyle stuff. No, you're going to get some pushback now. Because if we don't give any pushback, the, the, the later generation is going to sit back and say, oh, this must be okay. No one, no one talked negative against it. No one's really speaking out against us. I guess this is what I'm supposed to do. And then you get women who are 25 years old, Gen Z women, crying about how they have to work nine to five and they don't want to do that. They just want to stay at home and be a mom. But they felt like they had to do it because of what? Societal pressure. And I think this is the argument a lot of conservatives are having. I think I'm going to let this video play out for two more minutes and then I'll give my final thoughts. You're putting something, you know, your eyes and your ears are the windows to the soul. And you're basically, when you celebrate someone, and I'm using Cardi B here as an example because I think people are probably more familiar with her than they are with Sexy Red. Uh -huh. now, when you put someone like that on the Grammys stage, which is, again, a decision being made. There's, when I was growing up, the best, most talented people were on the Grammy stage. It was something you could watch with your family. Mm -hmm. And you still had poor people. Kind you still had, yeah, you go. still had poor people. You still had people that were living in the hood, okay? We didn't need somebody talking about their vagina mm -hmm. uh, in order to feel seen. So what you're doing is you're setting the stage for younger girls who aspire to celebrities to say okay well if i mimic that behavior i too can become famous what you're actually yep. doing is you're you're setting the idols yep. that people are going to look up to and mm -hmm. people are going to think this is what i should aspire to so it's actually working in the exact opposite way can i and, ask a question in, in, in that like evolution of things so if, I, if we look at like wap in particular um hasn't it generally been the case that music is always kind of pushing these sexual boundaries. So it might have been Elvis grabbing his crotch and dancing. It might have been uh, Michael Jackson's dancing is incredibly suggestive if you've seen that. Um, it might have been in Woodstock, all the loser hippies talking about love, sex, and rock and roll and drugs. Um, wouldn't like WAP just be kind of like the next evolution in a long no, chain of- pushing boundaries is not degeneracy, okay? And so here's what I'll say to you. Why don't you pull up the lyrics to WAP and read them, read them right now? Well, I don't. Why would I need to do cool, that? Oh, it's just Woodstock. We're just pushing. We're just pushing the boundaries a little bit. You, you, you probably have never even read the lyrics to WAP. Because I think I did because I think Ben Shapiro had no, a huge thing about he it. He couldn't have said. He, you may have seen him reading mm -hmm. the sanitized version of WAP, not mm -hmm. the one that is not sanitized. Like you, the, the uh, yeah, the, the 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 explicit version is you can't you can't you can't you, can't, you couldn't perform that on national TV, and I think that's the argument that Candace. Uh, great point right and this is the part i think this is the main difference between conservatives and liberals is that conservatives like to put out like empirical more practical applications hey don't tell me the theory behind it show me the results while liberals like they like to live in the theory oh if the theory sounds plausible we should try it and i don't think every idea every thought you have should be tried and i think this is one of them Right. Oh, we, music always pushing boundaries. This is the next iteration. And then conservatives are looking at the results of it. It's like, yeah, but is is decay in our culture where we don't have any morality. We don't have any substance as a culture. And now we're getting we're not even repopulating ourselves because we're becoming things that the other side doesn't even want. And I don't know. I just think a lot of this degeneracy is not a net positive on our culture. Right. And you, you guys can disagree with this, agree with it. I, I honestly don't care. But I, I see that if you look at the results of our culture, is our society as a culture, as a socially cohesive culture, is it better or worse? I'll say it's worse because you got people pushing a certain message that's leading down, that's incentivizing a certain outcome. And we're getting those outcomes. War on poverty is a perfect example. Well, Lindy B. Johnson said, hey, if you're a single mom, I'm going to give you money. A lot of women took this attitude as I don't need no man because the government can take care of me and my kids. A lot of women just started doing that. And then uh, from War of Poverty, War of Poverty came out and said, hey, we want to help the 20 percent of single mothers who can't make it out in the society. And we don't want to leave them stranded because it will make the problem worse. They, they did the emotional appeal. We did it. Next, thing you know, that 20 percent became 70, 70 percent of a community. Show me the incentives and I'll show you the outcomes. And I think our culture is an incentive structure. And I think what cons when conservatives push back against this stuff, I think it's liberals, uh, illogical proposition that they somehow have, uh, they assume that they have credibility when they say, oh, that's not a problem. Oh, why are you worried about what other people are doing? Because it affects our culture. That's why. But anyway, I digress.
Let me know your thoughts about the Candace Owens uh, kind of debating can uh, Destiny. I didn't go too much into it because I gave my own thoughts about it. But I, I honestly think it was a good uh, discussion overall. I think uh, in the comment section, if you read the comment section, a lot of people, you know, obviously partisan, liberal, tribalism stuff is in there. You know, some people are saying, oh, Destiny, uh, both sides are bad. Uh, De uh, Candace, oh, so you're saying you don't believe in anything. Oh, you're contrarian, right? But... And a day, the back and forth is important. I think that we need to normalize discussion from both sides. And I actually appreciate Candace going around all of Miami, my former, my former home, my hometown, uh, talking with PBD, Fresh and Fit, which is a video that's coming up soon. I, I really want to do uh, a video on that. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I really would be interested in what you guys have to say. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I really appreciate you guys watching to the end of the video. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.